We are back. That's right. We are back. This is the Epic Health Disparities Podcast Show. My name is Dr. B, and welcome back to our podcast show. This is show number 10. We are officially there. We are officially there. This is show number 10, (laughs) y'all. And I couldn't be more delighted in bringing these shows to the general public. My God, it has been worth the wait. Let me just say that, worth the wait. Uh, now I get to talk about things that I normally don't get to talk about from my academic side to the general public. And yes, these shows, uh, uh, by the way, thank you so much for uh, downloading our shows. Uh, this is show number 10, and it's entitled Health Outcomes uh, behavioral risk factors. That's right. We're still investigating the CDC Health Disparities and in- Inequalities Report, U- U.S. 2011. And this is the final analysis uh, of the CDC report. And uh, by the way, I got another special report in show number 11. <laughs> Already got that set up for you. But uh, in show number 10... <laughs> We are looking at health outcomes, behavioral risk factors. In show number nine, we looked at morbidity and looked at several different uh, morbidity issues. But this show, we're looking at health outcomes, behavioral risk factors. And we're going to focus on um, binge drinking, the U.S., 2009, as well as adolescence, pregnancy, and childbirth, U.S., 1991 and 1998, and then cigarette smoking, U.S., 1965 to 2008. That's right. This is in the report of CDC. So someone has to investigate these issues, highlight these issues, bring them up to another level. Because these documents are well, um, let me just say, cited by researchers again and again and again. But they're they're never, uh, not never, but seldom broken down to for the general public. And it's time. And that's what I'm doing in these reports. And by the way, uh, in this data and the reports and the Ethnic Health Disparities Show, by the way, uh, all rights and responsibilities of these Ethnic Health Disparities podcast show belongs to Dr. B. Dr. B. And uh, so, uh, again, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to email me at ejb six seven eight at gmail.com I will respond to you within a day or within a few hours or within a few minutes depending on when you send your email (laughs) cause I'm always checking my emails and uh, thank you so much for subscribing to we are on iTunes we are on iTunes we are on Spotify we are on Podbean thank you Podbean so much for getting our information out our podcast shows out there yes Podbean uh, thank you so much and as well as YouTube YouTube and uh, let me just say Twitter has uh, been blowing up as well as oh let me just I almost forgot I've been wanting to Instagram thank you so much for my Instagram followers they have lit up the support For the Ethnic Health Disparities Podcast Show. So thank you so much for my Instagram followers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You are real. Okay. So uh, I had to do a little shout out for my Instagram followers. So here we are. uh, Looking at three major issues. Health outcomes. Behavioral risk factors. From this report. Uh, Again, uh, it's so important to visualize uh, people from from this data. And that's what I always do. Visualize real people who are being affected by these health outcomes. It brings reality close to home. And many of these health outcomes can be prevented that's the reason again just a little follow through that's the reason why I'm doing these shows these are preventable this is just not a report all of this many of this and all of us 
are affected by these issues. Hello. It's just not a particular segment of the population. It's everybody. So these three major factors in this final uh, this uh, uh, segment of the CDC report, uh, behavioral risk factors, highlights binge drinking, adolescent pregnancy and childbirth, and cigarette smoking. Let's look at uh, binge drink, drinking, which really all of these issues got to me. It says, binge drinking is common among U.S. adults, especially among males age 18 to 34 years, whites, and those with annual household income of $50,000 or more. After adjustment for sex and age, the highest average number of binge drinking episodes during the preceding 30 days was reported by binge drinking drinkers whose household, household income was uh, less th- uh, less than fi- uh, greater than less than fifteen thousand. The average largest number of drinks consumed by binge drinkers, eight point four, was among American and Alaska natives. Increasing alcohol uh, screening for alcohol mu- misuse among including binge drinking also should be implemented. See. This is what teed me off. See how they sidestepped the issue. It first said binge drinking is common among U.S. adults, especially among males, 18 to 34, whites, with incomes greater than 50,000. And then they twist it real fast. And they highlighted issues, binge drinking among American and Alaska natives. Rightly so, yet... The highest prevalence occurs among persons 18, 34, among males, among white Caucasian males. Hello. Are there any interventions for white Caucasian males since this occurs on a highly regular basis? Binge drinking. And yet they do not do anything for American and Alaska natives. Nothing in uh, Highlighted only community preventive services. Come on. Counseling services. And then it says uh, frequency and intensity of binge drinking also should be monitored routinely, routine, routinely and guide development and ele- evaluation of culturally appropriate binge drinking prevention. Again, no specific examples. Just a generic policy statement. This is very important. We are losing lives by binge drinking. And this is happening among many white males. 18 to 34 years of age. This is a major behavioral risk factor. A morbidity issue. Where binge drinking leads to accidents. Hello. Death. Disability. Serious. Particularly during the end of the years. Excuse me. May, June. Graduations happening. High school, college. College campuses. See, I work at Universe. I've been working at universities all my life. And this is a major issue. Hello. I've been to enough universities. Hello. Oh my god. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say the universities. Hello. <laughs> not gonna go there. But I've seen enough. I witnessed enough. And this data is good. But it doesn't go far enough. It doesn't highlight we have a major epidemic of binge drinking among 18 to 34 years years of age, males, white males. And they need assistance. Hello, that's a disparity. Getting overlooked. Hello. Of course, I'm glad they mentioned American and Alaska Natives. Yet the largest group are white males, 18 to 34 years of age. Hello. And they're not doing anything. Speak up. Stand up, America. That's the reason why I'm doing these reports. It's for everybody. Everyone is included. I'm getting tired of this. Can't you sense my frustration? Come on. 
They don't even, <laughs> oh, 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 let me say, they, they're not even helping themselves. <laughs> the oh, oh, I guess I said that. Even the reporters of the CDC report, who are primarily white Caucasian, they're not even helping themselves, their own. Hello. Why is that? That doesn't make sense. They're not even helping their own. That's not fair. Wow. Another overlooked health disparity population. White males, 18 to 34 years of age, binge drinking. Hello. And this report was 20, what? What? We're talking about 2009 data? It's 2019 now. And these issues are blowing up even more. Hello. Okay, let's move on. Adolescent pregnancy and childbirth. U.S. birth rates for adolescents vary considerably by race and Hispanic origin. 2008, the birth rate for Hispanic uh, adolescents was approximately five times the rate for Asian Pacific Islanders and three times the rate for non-Hispanic white adolescents and somewhat higher than the rates for non-Hispanic black and American Indian Alaska Native adolescents. So we have pregnancy and childbirth rate among Hispanics. That is five times, three times higher than other groups. And the only thing this report says, evaluation studies have concluded that community service coordinated with positive youth development behavioral intervention is, in a, is an effective approach for reducing sexual risk behaviors among adolescents. What? There's no culturally competent strategy provided. Now I bring this one up because I used to live in Houston, Texas. Loved Houston, Texas. And I used to work, not work, but volunteered. I was a professor at University of Houston. And I volunteered with the March of Dimes. And their intervention program back in 19... Oh my gosh, yes I did. And I mean, this brings so many men. With the March of Dimes in 1988 and 89. And it was called the Baby Buddy Program. I loved it. I wanted. I, I got involved because I just wanted to help uh, young mothers and their prenatal and issues, and really getting help and assistance uh, with their pregnancy, and including their family and their partners. And I was asked to join a team, March of Dimes team, and they were very sincere in reaching out to the local communities. Local Latino population. Uh, the third ward, I think, in the third ward, uh, third and fourth ward in Houston, Texas. And uh, I loved it. I got into the community. And this was my volunteering time away from my assistant professor job at the University of Houston. And that's how I got to uh, really get involved with some of the issues happening in the Spank Latino, Latino uh, community. And the Latinas and their challenges of getting receiving regular prenatal care. So I can understand why there are higher rates of, uh, of pregnancy and childbirth. However, uh, there are a lot of issues, uh, challenging issues, cultural issues that come into play that that do not get addressed when you're when you're trying to reach out to communities. That have a certain pattern of of uh, behavior, and there are challenges for them, and that's where the local uh, agencies uh, have to reorient themselves to understand the cultural patterns that are happening in specific populations at that time, specifically among Hispanic Latino families, mothers, their the uh, the uh, dads, their family. Their traditions, okay. And you have to take all of that into account, and, th and therefore you understand the, you know, you have a better understanding why there are higher rates of pregnancy among adolescents, higher rates of childbirth. You understand, and and yet you try to work within their perspective, their value system, their history, and making some modifications to it because there was undue stress. Uh, that was happening in the Hispanic Latino population and uh, we brought that 
uh, to their attention. And a lot of young mothers recognize that they could modify their cultural traditions a bit and not be under undue stress. There you go. I'm saying that as culturally competent, undue stress to continue a tradition, which uh, uh, at that time in Houston, Texas, uh, again, a very large Latino population. And, and yet uh, there was ways to overcome that. And we provided some culturally competent strategies to get more education, to understand what was happening, but also get involved with uh, services and programs that could could help the young mother as well as uh, the uh, the father and the family. We always included the family uh, in our in the in the programs. And let me just say, March of Dimes, stellar, outstanding. I, I love that organization. From then to now, I've also been involved here in North Carolina with the March of Dimes, outstanding organization. By by any stretch of the imagination. So yes, that's my bias. I I truly support the March of Dimes. So uh, this report, this data is very relevant and it's it's on point. But yet, yeah, but yet, yeah, yet, provide some specifics. Again, I criticize CDC for not providing some specifics in helping and providing new interventions for, particularly for Hispanic Latina mothers. Specifically for, uh, uh, as they indicate, uh, uh, for uh, American Indian, Alaska Native adolescents and non-Hispanic blacks. Okay, the third factor, cigarette smoking. Wow. Here's another data from 1965. Wow. Uh, 2008 indicate declines in smoking among both males and females, non-Hispanic white and non-Hispanic black adults. Males, 18, less than 18 years of age. Excuse me. Despite these declines, data for oh oh, data for 2008 uh, indicate a much higher smoking prevalence among American and Alaska Native men and women. Smoking significantly decreased with increasing levels of educational attainment. Persons whose household incomes were below or uh, near the federal poverty level had substantially higher prevalence of smoking compared with persons with higher incomes. Yeah. So what? We understand. We know that. But they, again, they missed another opportunity here. Uh, again, if you look at cigarette smoking, it's higher among non-Hispanic white males and females. Hello, it's higher among non-Hispanic white males and white females. It's higher. Yet, in this report, they focus on American and Alaskan Native men and women because of the income, lower income. Then they mention uh, 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 intervention from the Institute of Medicine, ending tobacco prop. Again, avoiding the highest and the most prevalent segment of our U.S. population who are cigarette smokers they are non-hispanic white males and females highest prevalence of cigarette smoking why is cdc and other agencies and and right now it's not just cdc why are reports not providing uh, here's my bias culturally competent strategies for the general population White males and females. Hello. Wow, I'm getting to the point here. Uh, that's the reason why I say these ethnic health disparities podcast show is for everybody. It's not just for people of color. It's for every segment of the United States. And these are two particular I issues, binge drinking and cigarette smoking, that is highest among U.S. adolescents, white, non-Hispanic white males and females. And yet, there are no interventions, none, generic interventions uh, provided, but really none that that's targeted for these segments of the populate, U.S. population. This is a shame. Yes, I threw down the paper. This is a shame.
That's not right. Again, I'm for everybody. I'm for every segment of the U.S. And that means I'm for I'm for every, I'm just for everybody. And there's certain segments that have higher prevalence rates for certain diseases. Health disparity. And in this show, show number ten, we're focusing on binge drinking, adolescent pregnancy and childbirth, cigarette smoking, and two of these issues are happening among. Uh, um, uh, non-Hispanic white males and females. The other is happening among Hispanic Latina females. Uh, talking about adolescent pregnancy and childbirth. And we need culturally competent strategies for each and every segment. And it just amazes me that in 2019 we're still not getting culturally competent strategies for these very large segments of our populations. And by the way, Hispanics and Latinos obviously the largest minority in the U.S. Hello. And we don't have inter culturally competent intervention strategies. For that. For a, the largest. And, and and what did we say in the reports? Is, we're, all, we're one year away from 2020. But in 2030, uh, the dynamics will completely change in the U.S. Hello. And we still don't have recognizable recommended, citable, culturally competent strategies for Hispanic Latinos, for non-Hispanic <laughs> white males and females, and we don't even have strategies for uh, American and Alaska Natives, Asian Pacific Islanders, and non-Hispanic black males and females. Hello. It, got, it cuts across the board. For every group. Yeah, there's these reports don't provide these culturally competent strategies. They're out there. Yes, they're out there in 2019. But when you re have a report, and in 2011, there were reports, and there was culturally competent strategies in 2011. Hello. So, again, I'm finishing up this report. <laughs> did I? Yes, I did several shows on this CDC's report, Health Disparities and Inequalities. I, I, I forget how many report shows I've done on this. It's time to move on now. I provided you some data. That's what I wanted to do in these reports. But yes, I I am uh, you know now that I you know and, and I looked at them. I say I got to do shows on this. Now I know the reason why. I'm 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 mad. <laughs> Come on, CDC, step up. It's time. It's 2019 now. These 2011 reports did not do well. They know it. They know it. And they're they're doing a much better job now in 2019, but these 2011 reports really made me mad, and they still make me mad <laughs> in a good way, in a good way because you got to provide specificity at all, t particularly in reporting ethnic health disparities data. Hello, I'm 23 minutes in. There you go. That's our show. Show number ten. Uh, what was it? Show number ten. <laughs> If you have any comments or questions, please do not hesitate to email me at EJB678. This is Dr. B. Bringing it. Having fun. Wow. Ten shows. And thank you. Thank you, iTunes. Thank you, Podbean. Thank you, Spotify. And thank you, YouTube. And please do email me and subscribe. Peace out, folks. We out of here. Peace out.